How we doing, hockey fans? Ghost Picks Justin here. Um, coming off pretty, I would say, very evenly matched day of hockey. Um, I put out three plays today, and I told the guys that were on the plays that these are 50-50 games. The lines are right there. Uh, they could essentially go either way. Um, wasn't a wasn't like any like oh take this is this uh, none of that today um, our top play was Florida versus uh, Dallas I'm sorry I don't know what I was thinking there Florida versus Dallas uh, watched the game and Dallas completely dominated two periods and a half of that hockey game and it was just I um, was dreading the outcome I was like we lost our top play um, it was going to be a bad night. Well, so there was a broken glass. It had a little bit of repairs. And someone just flipped the switch on Florida. And they came out and they just absolutely dominated the next three minutes of the hockey game. Three goals in less than three minutes. Um, they ended up winning 3-2. to two. Um, Top player, winner. It was it was a very exciting game. Rough to watch the first two and a half periods if you had, if you had Florida. And then out of nowhere, they just flipped it on, played like the team that everyone knows they can be, and they ended up winning that hockey game. Dallas looked like they were ready to win another one nothing, 2 nothing hockey game, and they just totally flipped the switch. Uh, so I'm glad we get that top play winner. However, the other two games, um, we took Chicago and Columbus. We had Columbus money line. And I the reason I went after that game is I saw that P.K. Subban was in that. I mean, he's been a, he's been a pretty decent goaltender this year. But I felt like coming, like watching the game before, Columbus dominated. Uh, they had all the scoring chances. There's no reason they shouldn't have won the game prior. And I felt like they should have came out and won again, or at least had that same intensity. And I couldn't have been further from wrong on that. Um, they, they couldn't hit the net. Uh, they weren't even making Subin work at all. It was just nothing but uh, missing far right, high. Um, a couple posts here and there. Um, it, was, it was an absolute dismal performance by... Uh, Columbus and it, it just wasn't good to watch I mean they didn't even test the goaltender in it you know it's just kind of like what do you do at that point um, but you know going forward looking at a couple other things Columbus isn't a terrible team it's just they're so streaky and you never know what team you're gonna get um, so that's something we have to watch going forward I'm um, going to our third game that we had was Montreal versus uh, Winnipeg and they came out hot. I thought that they were going to respond. I thought Carey Price, the all-world goaltender that he is, would come through. And the first period, he was there. They were up 2-0. Uh, then it became 2-1. Then they went up 3-1. Um, I thought they had this two-goal cushion the entire time. And then right before the end of the second period, it, the floodgates opened. And then going into the third, it was 3-3. Um, took a terrible penalty at the end of the thir um, second period. Starting the power play, Winnipeg. And they had three power plays in the third, and they just absolutely poured it on Montreal. Um, Carey Price, I don't know what's going on there. He is playing horrendous. Um, he's obviously one of the all-time great goaltenders, and I don't know what kind of funk he's in and it's not his age he came out of the bubble last year and he played I think it was 20 games and he had like a 9-4 save percentage and then coming now he's just it's just awful um some bad goals led in tonight on very uncharacteristic um you want to keep going with him because you think that he's you think he's that guy that's going to bounce back but he's just playing absolutely terrible right now um and it was kind of a shame to see that again um but like I said kind of knew that these games were going to go hit or miss. I wish we could have swung one other one our way, um, but we didn't. Uh, we put kind of a lean on uh, the Islanders taking down Boston today. I didn't want to go ahead and call it a upset pick and then call it a, call it a play, um, but I did have a feeling that uh, the Islanders were going to come out and kind of um, they were going to take it to Boston, and they did, uh, oddly enough. Uh, I wish I would have had the confidence to put that play out there for you guys, but uh, still looking back, it's just that's a hard team to go against. And so um, although Boston was kind of shorthanded, I still thought they might be able to do it, so I didn't want to call it a play. Um, but if some of you guys went out there and you actually did play that game, hey, good on you. You got a, you got a nice little winner there. Um, but looking forward to Friday, uh, we got three games on the slate. Uh, and there's, pretty, there's some pretty good odds there. Uh, I got one game that I'm for sure uh, locked in as a play. 
Um, there's one other one that I'm kind of on the fence about right now, but I do want to give you guys a free play for tomorrow, and that's going to be Boston Moneyline versus New York. Boston, like I said beforehand, versus the Islanders, they just got worked. Uh, it wasn't good. They're going to come out with a lot of energy tomorrow, and they're going to take it to the Rangers. Uh, so I'm taking Boston money line tomorrow. Uh, that's my free play. Uh, we still have golf out there right now. Uh, we, we're doing day matchups if you guys want to get on that action. Um, after this, I'm about to go look and see if they have finished up the round play for today, and that way we can get those uh, uh, scoring out to those guys that actually played golf today. So good luck, God bless, grind down, and let's go.